on Karabat Street in Old Kabul. Men, clear away some of the rubble. Begin to build new walls in an alley that for hundreds of years was filled with generations of their families. Wed to music, bred to song, created to dance. They unroll their rugs carefully and with the gentleness say for a newborn child, unwrap the long neck, finely strung syringa, and the squat, round mouth, taut skin drums kept hidden all these years. Surviving decreed death. They unfold their voices, dig their toes into the soft carpet, let their arms open fully, tilt their heads, and begin to dance. These men of music teach their sons to play and sing. They dance once more in the sun's full light in a bombed out corner of old Kabul. They're letting their hearts howl and laugh and mourn as they once again become song. Song that lived through Taliban and under Mujahideen. Song to sound the moment when the stars break through the night. Song to open tomorrow's sunrise. Song strung with the notes from the age when Genghis rode his horses into their valley and forced the women to submit to his and his army's will. And as much joy as I have in the truth of their sound, I need to know if the women are singing and dancing too, has their death ululation been moved aside by Karabat Street melodies of loss and renewal? By the verses tracing back to the time of Akbar, who crossed their harsh mountain cliffs and taught a new kind of prayer, soon used to reveil and tightly bind the women. Or are the women's voices still confined? A dark, smoldering hum of betrayed history and faith Heard behind locked doors, in back 
of shuttered windows beneath heavy, dusty veils. Far away from Harabat Street, where the men sing a new 